Lamar Henry for Team Vista Texas Freedom Force. And uh, Lamar runs a LTC class in Yorktown, Texas, and he's going to come up here and speak to you guys a little bit about the LTC training. Uh, for some of you that don't know, uh, the others, and uh, you know, just bear with us and we'll get the rest of our speakers up as well. Okay, so I'd like to introduce Lamar Henry.
uh, we test students at the class in at the class at the end of the class. Period. Then we go to the range. Then the rounds are fired in three distances at the command of the instructor. And safety violations are not tolerated on the range. The score of seventy percent is required in both classroom and range. Uh, paperwork is received from the instructor. Online applications made, fingerprints scheduled and taken, money is paid, and finally the DPS begins a background check. Then you want I want to point out that the liberal media would like people to believe that likes of the carry holders and others exercising their Second Amendment rights is just pursued by a drunk bunch of radical gun rights. But rather, it's a serious and necessary response to a chaotic and increasingly cruel society that we live in. The Second Amendment is everyone's right to defend, not only from tyranny of government, but also defense of person and people. A license to carry is not a license to kill. It's a defense, it's a license of responsibility, and as I said, a license to defend. Training is necessary for most anything in life. After all, that's what schools are all about. The schools we wish to see secure. That's the long and short of it, basically. And I'll get off the stage and now let other speakers come up here. Now, if anybody has any lessons on license carry or about our organization, well, just look for me roaming around out here, and I'll try my best to answer. Thanks, everyone, for attending. You know, uh, before we bring up our next speaker, I just wanted to say thank you to each and every one of you guys that came out today. Um, you know, too many people today are under the impression that somebody else is going to fight their battle for them. And that's why people like you that actually show up to these events, we are the first uh, line of defense whenever it comes to taking up our cause. And, and we have to make sure that we are very, very vocal. Uh, to bring people on our side because right now the media is only telling one side of the story. These guys are here today, but for the most part, all you've heard is March for Our Lives and more gun laws. Gun laws aren't going to stop this. Gun laws, I mean, drugs are illegal, but people still possess them, people still use them, and that's the same thing with gun laws. If we really want to talk about protecting our children, we're going to have to come up with better solutions. And arming our, our teachers is one of those solutions that, that will definitely make a difference. So uh, I'm going to bring up our next speaker right quick. I uh, saw so him floating around here. Oh, here he is right here. Mr. Doc Green. Uh, many of you guys know from the Amazing Doc Green Show. Uh, he's a hell of a patron here in Texas. And so give him a round of applause. Thank you so much. How many people out there listen to the show? Raging Elephants Radio or American Voice Radio? Thank you. All God right. bless you guys. Hopefully after today, everyone will be a regular to the show. Thank, thank you, Mr. Armand. I appreciate that so much. Uh, what we exist to do is to make the world a better place. Now, I've asked you all to gather here today. Father God, I just ask you to minister to us, give us wisdom and understanding, and I thank you for this day and this place. Blessed be the Lord God who trains my hands for war. We are fighting a war. And somebody asked, what would Jesus do? Well, we, can, we know that. We have the answer to that, my friends. We can go to the book of Luke, written by Dr. Luke, the Greek physician. And in the book of Luke, he records the Lord Jesus Christ as saying, if you don't have a gun, sell your coat and buy one. Yeah. Now, I know some of you already said, nah, that ain't in there. And then somebody else said, well, it's in there, but he said, sword. You have to understand, at that point in time, a Hebrew was not allowed to own the finest self-defense weapon on the planet, which was a sword. That was written in 1932 A.D. Excuse me, 32 A.D. If it had been written in 1932 A.D., Jesus would have probably said, get a 1911. Yeah. So, which I just happen to have right here. The whole point is, the Lord Jesus Christ understood that the ability to defend yourself and others is more important than comfort itself. That's why he said, sell your coat and buy a gun. But Jesus might have been the first Navy SEAL. He said it would have been better for you to be cold and wet 
that do not be able to defend yourself and others. You know, when I got here today, I walked up to these fine gentlemen over here and I, I asked them, how does it feel to be at the safest place in South Texas? <laughs> Look at all of these taxpaying Texans that are here and they honor God, they honor society, you guys work hard, you're the people that make this world work, yet you also understand a basic human tenet, and that is simply this. A citizen is armed. A slave is disarmed. And when you see a group of people out there and they have been forcefully disarmed, they have become slaves of the state. But when you see a citizen, he's walking around like I am today with his 1911 in battery, cocked and locked, unsafe. But that's what a real citizen looks like. And fortunately for these police officers here, should I ever be in a gas station and I see some, some guy walking up on a cop who's got his back turned getting ready to kill him, that cop is going to be safe because I'll take out the killer before he kills the cop. This is what citizens do. We take care of ourselves and others. What would Jesus do? Jesus said, sell your coat and buy a gun. You know, at that point in time, it was illegal for a Hebrew to own a weapon. A lot of people don't realize that. Jesus was advocating civil disobedience. The Roman law said, you as a Hebrew, since you are a slave to the Roman state, you are not allowed to own a weapon. Yet Jesus told them they should get weapons and be prepared to defend themselves and others. Now the context of that was he was sending his apostles out into the world. He was sending them out to other towns and he knew that those roads are populated by highwaymen. Today we call them road pirates and they got black cars with lights on the top, frequently un unmarked. But back then, uh, the road pirates were dressed a little different, but they would come in, they would kill you, they would rob you, kind of like they do today. And you've got to be able to defend yourself against that. So this is why he said you've got to be armed. You have to have a sword. Our children are without a doubt our most precious resource. And you know the truth of that. I'm not a young man. The day and time when I can affect the world around me is slipping away. It's going to be up to the children. So the first thing that has to happen is we have to stop the number one killer of children in the United States. And that is, of course, planned infanticide. Some people call it Planned Parenthood, but let me tell you, the people who work at Planned Parenthood do not intend for anyone to become parents. They plan to kill every baby that comes in there. And they kill more babies at Planned Parenthood every week right here in Houston that have been killed in every school shooting that has happened in history. And they do that every week up there, and they do it legally. Do we love our kids? If we truly love our kids, we're going to teach our children what Jesus said, which I would call the 12th commandment, since the 11th was to love your neighbor as yourself. The 12th commandment, sell your coat and buy a gun. If we really care about our kids, are we going to rely upon armed uh, officers of the state to protect them? When the Supreme Court has already come down with the decision that said that no police officer is required to defend anybody from anyone. That was an actual court case. We're all the way to the Supreme Court. The police are not required nor expected to protect you. And when seconds count, the police are always minutes away. And if they're in Broward County, they're minutes away hiding behind their cars waiting for the shooting to stop. Here in Texas, we love our kids. We understand they are our legacy. We understand that we cannot count on the police officers to protect our kids. We also understand that we don't want to necessarily depend on a rent-a-cop to protect our kids. What we want to depend on is the armed citizen who probably, like most of you, not only invested your money in a fine weapon, 
You paid an enormous fee to the state and bowed down and said, Mother, may I? 